Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, thanks for coming today. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, hit the like button before you leave today. That helps out my channel a huge amount uh, as far as getting uh, YouTube's algorithm to promote it. So I appreciate it if you would do that. Thank you. Today I wanted to do uh, sort of a, a bold wide band ring uh, that's domed a little bit and has a, a, a black onyx that has kind of a checkerboard cut on top. Uh, with a eight prong setting on it. So I thought I'd make that today. Before we got started on that though, today I need to thank some groups. Uh, my YouTube subscribers, we're approaching 4,300. Uh, that's great. Thank you so much for subscribing and your uh, nice comments and suggestions and uh, uh, monetary contributions. I appreciate those things. Um, I also wanted to thank my patrons over on Patreon. That's continuing to grow. I have a really nice group of people over there who uh, uh, interact with each other on our Discord server and share pictures of what they're making and ideas and resources. It's a nice place over there. If you're interested in checking that out, you should visit the video uh, description down below. There's links to that uh, where you can sign up and find out about all the different uh, levels of my Patreon, as well as uh, links to my website where you can buy jewelry uh, my merch store, and also um, uh, buy me a coffee if you just want to uh, give a contribution to the channel. That always helps. Thanks. Okay, with that being said, let's get started on this project today. Okay, to start with, I have this faceted black onyx here. Uh, let's find out how big it is. Where's my little ruler? So let's see, this guy's about... It's like about a 14 by 14 by 9 or 10. So we'll be using that for our stone. Uh, this is my design idea book, which you can get at the merchandise store if you're interested. I like them because they have these little grid patterns on them, uh, but don't have the actual lines. You can still see where the corners of the grids would be, uh, but it doesn't get in the way of your drawings that you're making. Okay, so this is going to be kind of a, a bigger, bolder ring. I'm going to make it about a size 11, I think, is what I measured this for. And the materials we're going to use are going to be 18 gauge sheet for this. I'm probably going to make this little kind of... Uh, it's not really going to be a bezel, it's going to be a, a, a base of a prong setting, so we're going to make that out of some sheet with a little bit of wire to give it some decorations. Uh, and then these prongs here will be 16 gauge round wire, I think. Uh, I'll probably use 22 gauge sheet for the for the collet that I'm making here for this stone. So I think that's about all I'll need. Probably I might use some 18 gauge round wire for the decorations on the side of this. This is going to be the collet that I'm making. So, but first I think let's uh, let's go ahead and make that collet thing first. So I'm going to, I've been debating whether I should use 26 or 22 for this. I'm thinking maybe I'm going to use 22. And I want to make this so that it's just a tiny bit smaller than this, so that the stone's girdle will kind of rest right on top of it. So I'm going to go for a little bit smaller than that. And I don't want it to be too tall, so I'm going to make it pretty thin. So let's, let's do that first. I'm also going to cut out the middle of this uh, band and we're going to dome this band a little bit to see how that looks. Um, and that way the, the pavilion of the stone will kind of sit down in that hole. Theoretically. <laughs> Let's go like four millimeters. How about that? This is going to need to go all the way around this thing, pretty much. So I want to make sure to cut it long enough. That's one, two. I'm going to cut it about right, right here. For those of you who've never seen one of my videos before, I use pretty much exclusively hard silver sheet solder. 
and I use a spray-on flux called Mighty Flux. I get a lot of questions about these shears. These are Fiskars craft shears that you can get pretty, pretty readily at a craft store, generally, or Target or some other similar outlet. Um, and they're not a sponsor, although I would be Fiskars if you're interested. I've been pretty impressed with those. Let's see if we got enough here to work with. First, let's file the edge. Get it all nice and cleaned up. Could bend this around a bracelet mandrel or something, or a, an oval jump ring mandrel, or, or whatever. You probably could not <laughs> bend this around a bracelet mandrel. That's not big enough. <laughs> Wrong word popped out of my mouth. I'm starting to get in the size range here. I need to make it a little bit of a more narrow oval here. I wish I get the size and the shape to it, the better my result will be, I think. Oops, come back here. Now, I can't break this stone because I don't have a replacement for this one. <laughs> so I'm thinking that's pretty close, especially if I mark it right where they meet and then I file it a little bit before I solder it. So let's cut it right there. at a slight taper. It'll give me just a little bit of inward angle on the collet that I'm creating here. It'd be nice if it was tapered inwards just a skosh. But I also want to put a little bit of decorative stuff on it here. So let me find some 18 gauge now. Spend a little time getting getting this a little straight. At least straight enough to measure long enough pieces to solder on here. If I cut them a little bit long, I know they'll be at least long enough, and then I can just cut them off after I have them soldered on. So one of the ways to prevent getting a lot of sloppy solder mess when you're soldering something down onto a piece of sheet is to pre-melt some solder on the whatever decoration you're adding to it. That way it doesn't travel very far from the from the wire or the balls or whatever you're putting on there. So we'll get those as straight as we can. And then we'll sweat a little bit of solder onto them. Okay, I'm going to cut a little bit of uh, finer solder, if I can find my solder. If you haven't done sweat soldering, it's where you pre-melt some solder into place so it's where you want it to be uh, prior to putting the two pieces together that you're trying to solder together. So, hopefully I said that right. You're just getting some solder where it needs to be in advance. Basically. One of the other things uh, I do that not everybody does is I use a lot of pick soldering. And that's where I pick up little bits on the end of this pick and put it in place that way. If you want, check out, I have a video on pick soldering. That's a good skill to learn if you want to speed up your process. So check that video out sometime. The faster you learn how to do this, the, the quicker your process will become, I think. One of the things I struggled with at first was I didn't get into it exclusively to make money, but that was a you know, an added side benefit that I was hoping for. And uh, how slow things go at first made me think I would never be able to make enough inventory or be able to produce enough to, to make a living in it. 
But pick soldering always speeds that up. You're not spending uh, ten hours per piece or whatever. Um, I probably should have left this a little wider so I didn't have to balance them right on the edge, but I wasn't thinking. <laughs> Either way, I just want to put it right on the edge there. Sometimes you can use the flux on here to stick it down. So it gets a little gooey and sticky. As long as we got a seam all the way down there, and it looks like we probably do, I can just uh, trim off those wires off the edge. Just file everything uh, flat. Remember, I have these at a slight angle. Then maybe we can bend it around the mandrel here a little bit. I'm soldering these two together. I'm going to try and get the ends straight onto each other. And then we'll bend it back into the shape it needs to be. It's pretty stiff once you put the wire on here, so it may take a little work to get it ready to solder. Remember how I angled it a little bit? It causes that to happen. So we've got those two ends lined up nice. Go ahead and solder it. I have enough solder on there to solder it. So. Jump ring mandrel here a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup filing here now. Top and the bottom. <clears throat> I think I have an oval jump ring mandrel in here somewhere. Locate it. This will help us get it a little bit more oval solder joint on one side there. Actually, no, I'm going to put it on the end, I think, for this one. It needs to go in a little bit, a little bit more. get it pretty close to the shape of the stone here. It's got a generally regular 
outline and everything. Just corrected a slight bend issue. So I kind of like that. That's pretty good. Hopefully you can see that. So we need to figure out where those uh, prongs are going to go. And I think the best way to do it might be just a marker over the marker. I want it close enough to the corner to where it can't pop out the front. Or the side, you know. It'd be easier if I make a scratch mark through the, the ink here to see exactly where it needs to go so I can get it all prepped better. If that makes any sense. It's a tool that um, machinists use a lot of times. Make marks show up better. Okay, so I think probably it's going to be two prongs coming up pretty close to each other. So I might go about right like that. Doing my best to get these as you know, placed as symmetrically as possible. This is pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Dremel and I'm going to cut. Uh, kind of a notch that wide that goes all the way down to the bottom here uh, so I can insert some of that 16 gauge round wire two pieces of it that are going upwards though so uh, so it'll be a loop like a staple shape going into the into the pad we're gonna hold it in place with so I'll be right back kind of dremeled those down so you can see right down to the, the inner sheet layer this will kind of sit on top of that now, Oops. theoretically. And then I need to add some prongs going upwards from there, and that's what those slots are for. I ran out of 16 a while back, so I made some more. And I need to make uh, kind of like hairpin shapes or staple shapes that are pretty close together. So I'm going to cut them about Part of it needs to be, uh, I'm going to push them down into a magnesia block like this to hold them upright. And so they need, to be, they need to be long enough to push down into the pad and still stick up above this thing enough. So I'm thinking about, let's do an inch. make a loop in the middle of them. bending them past like that because I'm going to take the needle nose and bend them back the other way so that they meet up kind of in the middle there and then separate. At least that's the plan. We'll see how it works out. I'm making this one from scratch. I've never made one quite like this. If 
figure. If I can get him to solder in there. Kind of like that. Those two prongs will spread nicely right about there. And then uh, we can just snip off the tops and we'll have some nice, nice prongs to, to put on there. So I'm going to try and get all of these to look kind of like that. Lately I've been kind of enjoying doing custom-made prong settings. I used to just do kind of a basic prong setting, but it's it's been fun to try some different types that I've seen variations of. Or I definitely learned quite a bit about putting these together. I had a thought. I think it might be helpful if uh, we solder these bottoms together first. I was going to just do it all in one, but if I do that, then there will already be some solder in place, and then I can just push them in right next to it, and probably I might add a little bit just to be safe, but there will be enough definitely to get it stuck down on there. So, <clears throat> so let's do that. Get those nice and connected. busy week this week. I do a couple of extra um, exclusive tutorials for my patrons every month. And this week was the extra video week. <laughs> I did some Art Nouveau earrings that they voted on. I thought they came out pretty good. I'll put a picture up here. Sometimes it's nice to have a soft surface you can push stuff into. Let me try to get these all about the same height. Solder those on there. Got them all soldered on. I'm going to go ahead and snip off the bottom parts. I 
Okay, so I'm going to leave that be for now, and we need to look at our drawing a little bit. So, this thing is going to be mounted up here. And I wanted this pretty wide so that I could, when I domed it, some of it's going to curve down here. And so, we're going to need to cut a pretty big piece off of here. This is 18 gauge sterling sheet, so let's see if we can't figure out the dimensions. This brings us to about 72 millimeters long, so I got a nice factory edge here. Got about 22 millimeters, I think. out. If I remember right, I found the center first, and I measured in five, four millimeters from each edge, five millimeters from each edge. So let's do that. Um, center wise, one, two, three, seven, right? So we got one, two, three and a half right there. Five millimeters in from each, each side of it. There. There. Like that. Okay, so now if I scribe a line between those points, it should give us a nice taper. I usually cut the rectangle out first and then we'll cut the, the ends off. designing a new uh, t-shirt for the for the store that has a more humorous theme on it so look for that in the near future Set that one flying. Now I'm going to spend a little bit getting this all cleaned up with the file. Okay, now come to the more fun part. Let's see if we can get this to dome nicely. A little bit.
maybe the best bet would be to solder this together and then we'll see if we can do any further shaping of it. Even if I can't, I'm satisfied that we got sort of a slight dome there, but we'll see what we can do here. Okay, I'm going to move this over to a more stable surface where I can whack on this a little bit more. Okay, I I shaped this a little more and I filed it and cleaned it up and, and I also neatened up the edges like this with the, with the master's file like this. I think if I put it right about there that'll be okay. <clears throat> One other thing I did is I tapered this inwards a little bit in this direction so that the edges would sit down nicely on the, on the little dome shape. You make sure it looks straight this way as well as having about the same distance from either side. You really want to make sure those are touching both the bottom and the sides. And then there's a lot more mass in the band here than there is in the setting up top. So I'm going to kind of avoid the setting because that will get hot just by being in proximity to this. It's going to take a bit of work to get this big chunk of silver on the bottom of the temperature. for a minute. Pretty much the last thing I have to do is cut out the inside hole here and I'll use the drill to drill a starter hole and then I'll just use the jeweler saw to kind of go around there as best I can at a kind of an angle. And then I'll use the file to get the rest of it or the Dremel, either one, to clean it up. So but yeah, let's let that cool off for a minute and I'll go cut that hole in there just wanted to show you, I uh, cleaned up the inside of that. I'll probably do a little bit more cleanup before I set the stone and everything, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, heat this up and pickle it, and then uh, polish it, and I'll bring you back. Uh, I'll bring it back and we'll set the stone together. We'll have to cut these things off after that so that there's actually eight prongs. But then we'll set that stone. So. A little bit of a rainstorm. <laughs> Okay, so what I, I did one of these uh, in advance. I, uh, I cut it and then I spread it open like that and I'm going to spread these other ones open too. And I also did some dremeling on the inside. start pushing these down. It's going to become a problem because they're too long still, so I'm going to cut them off a little bit shorter. Not to their final length, probably.
I have those pushed down pretty well, then I can snip them off. Last thing I'll do is <coughs> file these down into kind of a more of a taper right into the stone and probably a point. So that'll be what I do next here. Uh, I'll take some pictures for the final thing at the end and uh, show you what it looks like. Okay, well that was the domed black onyx ring. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to hit that like button before you leave. That helps out a great deal. And um, you know, check out the video description uh, as well as maybe visiting a few other of my videos. I have 180 plus videos up now. Uh, lots of content for beginners, intermediate, and advanced people. So if you like that kind of stuff, uh, you know, make sure to hit the subscribe button and uh, also maybe hit the bell so you get notifications when I upload a video, which is on uh, generally on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So um, I'd love to have you sign up. And uh, if you're interested in a more interactive experience, you know, check out my Patreon. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. Happy silversmithing. Take care.